What we're going to be going over here is linear regression and we're going to look at the goodness of fit test here. And the goodness of fit test that we're going to look at is R squared here. So we're going to look at how we develop our equations here to determine what R squared is here. And really what this goodness of fit or R squared is telling us is how well our model that we're going to have here, and it's going to be a line that we have represented for, by our data here. And we want to know how well our model or this line fits our data. Okay, so let's look at it in terms of our XY graph here. So along our x-axis, that's going to be our independent variable, and we'll just refer to that as x here. And then along our y-axis will be our dependent variable, and we refer to those as y here. Okay, so what we've done here with this, uh, with this uh, example here, we've got some x-y coordinates. So we're going to have point x1, y1, and that's going to be some actual point here. And then we'll have another point here, x2, y2. And then we'll have any number of different points here. So we get up and we look at our, we're going to go all the way up to xn, yn here, any number of points. And what we've done here, we've taken and we've put those actual data points, xy data points into uh, either, cal we calculated a linear line here that represents those points here. And what we want to do is determine whether this linear line is, an, is a good representation here of the data points. So what we've done here with this model, and our linear line here is really our regression model that we're going to look at it. And that's that green upward sloping line here. So what we've done here uh, for our line, we're going to have y, that's our a dependent variable here, is going to equal m, that's the slope of our line, that's the change of y over the change of x, and that's really you move over so many x units, you move up so many y units. So that's your slope here. And then you take your slope times x, whatever your x quantity would be here, your x point here. You take that slope times x, and then you add to it b, and b is really the y-intercept, where x equals 0. Uh, or you're going to have some y-intercept or y-value here. So that's our model that we're going to be looking at and see how well it fits. So y, our value here that we have to predict, a predicted y here is equals m, the slope, times whatever x value we have here, plus the b inter y-intercept here. Okay, so that's the model, and we have to determine how well this model here fits our different data points here. So what we have to define here is we know what our model is. That's our known amount here based on we determine what our slope and what our y-intercept is here. Then the other thing we have to know is the mean average here. So we've what we have to do is we take all our y points or all our y data points, y1, y2, y3, 4, 5, up to yn here. So you just sum up all those y values here, their actual amount divided by the number of data points, and you're going to come up with some mean average here, a y. So I'm just showing that with the y with the bar up across here. That's our average or mean average for a y. And that showed it uh, shown here by this blue line here. So that's what passes through our data points as the average y here. So we know our green line here. That's our model. That's our line that's represented by our different xy coordinates here. And then we know that this blue line here, this horizontal blue line, that's our just represented by y as the average y values. Okay, so for R, R squared here. So what we're going to do here, we have to know our total sum of, total squared error here, as they call it. These, and let's look at it. We look at a data point. Let's look at our x1, y1 here. And what we look at in terms of x1, y1, we'd be doing the same thing for each of the data points, x2, y2, and up to xn, yn here. Okay, so we've got this actual data point here, x1, y1 here. And what we take it from that actual data point here, our total sum of squared error here, and that squared error is the difference between our y mean here, our y mean here, showing the blue line, and our actual data point here, x, y, x1, y1 data point. So that's our total uh, squared error here, represented as TSS here, 1 here. Then the next error we have to deal with is the residual error here, residual squared error represented as RSS here, and that's this green, our green arrow here, and that's the difference between the predicted y here, for, that's the case here where you take your x1 here, put it into your equation times your slope, plus your y-intercept is going to give you some y value here. So that's our model that we have to look at here. So we're taking the difference between that predicted y here and our actual y here. So that's our residual squared error here, and that's not, exp it's, they refer to it as not explained here by the model here. But then what we have is the other one here, this gold arrow, and that's the difference, that's our uh, explained squared error here, ESS here. 
And that's really the difference between the predicted point that we have here by our model or our line here and, the, and our average or our mean average here, y here. So, okay, so those are the three values that we have to deal with here. And what we do here for each of these errors here, TSS1 and we would, and each of these errors here, RSS, ESS, TSS, we sum those errors here. And we square the errors here to get rid of any negative uh, values that we have in it. So we're ending up with some squared amount for each of those here. Okay, so now let's go and let's uh, look at, the, you want to develop our equation here. Okay, so maybe let's just go through this, our squared error here. And this is what you'd be doing in your calculations or what your computer software program would be doing here. So the first thing we look at our squared a SE here, I represented a squared error here for ESS here. And that's that Y, that's the Y variation explained by the model. And our model is Y equals MX plus B here, that line here. So this is explained by the y variation, variation in y that explains by the model. And that's simply taking your y mean here and subtracting it from it, the predicted y here, the mx1 plus b, that difference, subtract that difference and just square that quantity here. So you do that here for uh, each, for your x1s, your x2s here, and you're up through xn's here. So what you're doing is you're determining the uh, squared error here based on the variation in y that explains by the model and that's what we looked at on our graph up above here so just remember this y bar here that's the y mean here so for the y variation as explained it's based on your y mean value and you subtract from it your predicted y here for each of those different x values and square that quantity and then just add up all those here. And then for our RSS here, that's the squared error here for the residual. And this is uh, the y, what the variation in y, that's not explained by the model. And I'm, that was, I'm showing that in green, that was our green line up here. This gold one here, I was showing by that gold line. Let's just go up and look at it here. Just look at it up here. That was the ESS here that we looked at, that equation. And then that RSS here is shown in green here just to understand that. Okay, so so for our squared error here, for our residual squared error here, sum of squares for a residual, is the difference between the y, that's the actual y1 here, uh, minus the predicted y here, m, x1 plus b. That difference between each of the pre actual y values here and the predicted y value here squared here, and you do that for each of those, y2 minus the actual y here represented by the line here, Square that on through, go through all through y n here. So that's your total squared error here, uh, y variation for the residual, and then your total squared here area here for our squared sum of squares here, squared error total amount with S E here, the total squared error here. That's just the variation, the total amount, and that was based off that blue line here, our y average. So you just take your each of your uh, values here, your actual y less the uh, mean y here, whatever you have for your mean y average here. And you just take that difference in square and do that for each of your data points here. y2, the actual y here, less your mean y, and square that, that difference squared, and on so here through yn. So you've got your squared error here. I'm just showing up the summation sign here, our error here. So what you're really looking at in your equation here, you have your total, your TSS here, or that was a your y variation, your total amount here, TS represented by TSS here, or the squared error here for the total squared error here, TSS sub TSS here, that equals the explained squared error here, ESS here, that would be the squared error here for the explained squared error here, plus RSS here, that's the not, ex that's the not explained here by the model here. So that's represented as RSS here, or the squared error here for RSS. So. That's for our y variation here. Total a squared error here equals the explained x squared error here plus the not the portion that's not explained here. Okay, so let's go up and let's develop our equation off that here. Okay, so back to our little diagram here, just so you understand it here. We went through those equations here. TSS, that is shown here, and equals ESS. That is our little gold line up here. And this y here is that y mean here. The green line here was our, our line here, that uh, y equals mx plus b here. So our se tss here equals se of the explained error here, here plus 
RRSS here, the residual error that's not explained. So you can just see by the diagram here from your mean value, your total TSS here equals our green value here, RSS, the residual that's not explained. That's the difference between our actual point and the predicted point here, plus the ESS here shown in gold. So that's how our we have to look at it in terms of our squared errors here. So you have a total amount of error here equals the explained error here plus the residual error here. Error. Okay, so R squared here is just uh, given this term here. It's coefficient of determination here. And R squared, that's what we're looking at this fitness here, is, the, is really the explained sum of squares, ESS here, or SEESS here, divided by the total sum of squares here. Total error here, TSS here. So that's what we're looking at here. So that's the definition of R squared here. So just looking at, going back to our equation here, where TSS here equals our, our total squared error here equals the explained squared error here plus the, R, the uh, residual error here, the error that isn't explained here, the RSS here. So just rearranging our equation here, moving RSS over to this side of the equation. So we subtract RSS from both sides and we end up with our explained squared error here equals our total squared error here minus RSS here. Okay, so now we can just, by rearranging the equations and making some substitutions, it gets our understanding here. So R squared here, the explained squared error, divided by our total sum of squared, uh, total sum of squares here, ES divided by R, TS equals really R here. We make our substitution, our ES, we just substitute that in here for the TSS minus RSS here. Just making that substitution, divided by our total squared error here. So you can just divide, now just uh, take and expand this, uh, this portion of the equation here. So you're going to get your R squared here, your R squared uh, uh, sum, or R squared value here is going to be equal to your TSS divided by a TSS, the total squared error here, minus, because we're dividing both of these values here by TSS here, minus RSS divided by TSS, just expanding that equation. So you understand that. So now this RSS, your residual uh, error here that, that's not explained here, divided by the total squared error here, is really the percent of total variations that's not described by x here. So that's a total variation in y that's not described by x. Just this portion, RSS divided by TSS. So this is what R squared is here. We could have just went to that right away here and given that equation, but this is how it was de developed. So you got your total squared error here, unity divided by total squared error. So that equals one here, and then you just subtract the RSS here divided by the TSS or the, the explained, uh, not explained error here by the total error here. So that, that's going to give you the total variation described by X or by, that's the mouth, the, this is what's described. This was not described up here, so you'd subtract out what's not su uh, described here by X from your total amount here. So that's going to give you the differences, the total variation described by X or by your equation here, y equals mx plus b here. So that's what you're talking about for the R-squared test. So what do we want with the R-squared test here? We got a unity a, a number here, a one, and we're gonna be subtracting some percentage from it or some uh, percentage quantity from our unit quantity. So the question is this, or this is what it says here. So if SERSS or this RS here, the total sum of total squared error here for the residuals here, if that is small here, very small, it's gonna be a real small fraction here. So when it's small, you're gonna have a lot, you're gonna have a number close to one here. So that's gonna tell you you have a good fit when this RSS here or your total uh, uh, squared error here for your residual here is small, you're gonna have a real small fraction here that you're gonna be subtracting from your uh, quantity here, or unit number one here. So that's gonna give you a good fit. That tells you that R squared will be close to one and a lot of variation of y is explained by the variation in x or by our line here. Because we have to put in our x value here uh, to determine our y value. So y is the, is the dependent variable here and it depends on x. So if r here, r squared, is close to 1, a lot of, again, a lot of the variation in y is explained by the variation in x. Now, the opposite, if true, is if RSS here is very large. So if we got a very large 
uh, RSS here, we're going to have a very large percentage over here. And then we'd subtract that from our 1 or our 100% here. So we're going to get a very low R squared here. So this is the case where with a really low R squared here, then you're, you wouldn't be a very good fit here, just because the opposite is true. So what we're saying here with this R squared, if it's equal to 0, R squared here is equal to 0. That is, you'd have 1 here versus just RSS in TSS would be equal here. Uh, T, RSS would be equal to the TSS here. You'd have a zero quantity here, or R squared here would be quantity. So the model didn't, that would say that the model did not explain any of the variation here. And then if R squared here is equal to one, that is our RSS had really no value here, then it's telling us that our model is, is explaining everything. And so that's what you're going to have to deal with. This R squared is either going to be between some zero and one quantity here, where it's zero, the model didn't explain any of the variation. That is, our line equation didn't define any of the variation. And if it's one, it's explaining that our line model explained everything. So, but really, you're looking at neither zero or one is very good here. So you want, some, you want to get something close to 1 here, and you certainly don't want it at 0 here, because 0 is going to say that you know the model, that line equation, doesn't uh, give us any representation here of our y value based on our x, our, depend, our independent variable x. And so that's what you're talking about here. So you, you want something be, uh, close to 1 here, but you certainly don't want it at 0. So and again, remember our model here of that line was y equals mx plus b here. So that's the model we're dealing with. So uh, neither 0 or 1 is a very good uh, number here for your r squared here. But nonetheless, you want to get it up closer to 1 here. You certainly don't want it at 0 here. OK, so that's pretty much how we've gone about here developing our, our, r, squared, our r squared here for that goodness of fit test. OK, so that'll summarize our discussion.